Young creatures are never safe. Especially when fast creature like Sorarosaurus prowls the streets. But rather than just hunting down children, it is more fun to target bigger and harder prey. Hello there, my name is Adobokta, and today I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Sorarosaurus. Quickly, I want to disclaim that any and all future updates may change the way you play as this creature. And on my time with the creature are limited, so one of your more experienced Ceratosaurus player might not agree with everything I say. And if you find something disagreeable, just comment it down below in a mature way. Also, this video will be focusing on solo gameplay, meaning I will not say anything or give any tips about what you should do if you're in a group. In this video, we will be going over the arsenal of the creature, what choice of subspecies you should choose to grow, your terrain compatibility and what type of fights you can find yourself in, be it you, Verdusa, Middle Tears, Apex, etc. And at the end, I'll give a summary. First off, for head abilities, we have two slots, meaning you can equip two head abilities. We have the standard fight with neither positive or negative effects and causes medium damage, nothing too special about it. And then we have the charge up ability that deals damage according to how long it's being held. Now I want you to keep in mind, in this video we established that size does matter when it comes to how much damage you deal or take, taking also in consideration what type of hide your enemies might be equipping. What I'm trying to get at is you might do less damage than you expect. I will say this though, I've only experienced difficult with this when going up against high tiers, so when you're going up against middle class or low tiers you can expect a more correct damage output. I don't know if that was the right term. In any case, since you can equip both, you should have both. But since there are no abilities for it yet, we'll just have to wait for that in the future. And skipping metabolism, for height we have three options. We have resilient scales which increases bleed and venom healing by 30%, tough scouts that increases armor, and the last one that just increases speed. Personally, I choose better armor. You're fast enough to outrun the big creatures, but it can be problematic if you meet another fast creature, but that's where the other ability comes into play. That ability is the leap ability, which increases your jump height and decreases fall damage. Really, really good for losing any enemies. For tail abilities, we have two options, we have balance and normal tail attack, and I usually use normal tail attack and I'll come back to that because there's a really good reason why you should use the normal attack. Everyone have the preference, but this is at least what I use as my arsenal for my battles. Your choice for subspecies kinda depends on what you're planning to fight. If you plan to fight mainly low tiers, then choosing a speed Sera is better because most low tiers are fast and they will most likely outrun you if you try to hunt them. If you're going to fight a middle or high tier, then I would definitely go defense. Even if you go full speed, you aren't the fastest creature in the game, and you don't have a pack to formulate any good baiting strategy, which means you have to be able to take a punch. And with your leap ability, you don't necessarily need to be faster than your opponents, you just need to be in the right environment to get to a place where they can't get you. Speaking of terrain, I think I made it obvious that you would definitely like a terrain with more hindrances, bit bushes, rocks, and a bit of elevations to be able to get rid of any pestering uh, enemies. The range of attack of the Sorarosaurus is actually surprisingly quite small, with the exception of the tail. This means that you really have to get close to your enemies in order to hurt them, and that can be problematic. I'll say this now, but you will most definitely be hit if you choose to fight. The Sorara might not be the biggest carnivore in the game, but he is tall enough to hit the belly of an apex. I said earlier that there is a legitimate reason to use the tail ability over the balanced tail, and that is because when you apply the charge ability, which by the way doesn't use any stamina, after you let it charge up the maximum potential and release it, you'll have a cooldown of 4 seconds for any and all head abilities. 
meaning your only attack then would be your tail ability. A good combo attack is to first start off using the charge ability to deal as much damage as possible, let it hit, run to the side and then use tail ability. Then you just run out, get ready for next attack and repeat. You can do the same strategy on apexes and just run into their body and bite them, but if you want to deal maximum damage then you need to go for the head, and to do that you need to add a little jump. Of course you're vulnerable to their bite attacks, so it's a high risk high reward. In actual combat, people aren't just gonna let you bite them, you'll have to be a lot more... smart. Before I even give any strategy on how to try and fight an Apex, I firstly wanna say that if you're a beginner player then you should definitely avoid fighting Apex players. Especially if you are alone. Even if you're in a pack, it is extremely dangerous. And it's even worse if you play against an Apex player who knows what he's doing. Smart Apex player knows that chasing you would be a waste of time and instead just let you run around circles around them, letting yourself tire yourself out and waste your stamina while they're just tanking it because they can, and when you're low on stamina, that's when they'll start playing more aggressively and you'll be most likely forced to leave the battle. Now there is the possibility of you leaving the battle heal up because you do heal faster than them and come back for more, but it's not like they won't heal them too and it is more of a stupid battle, to be honest. Even the damage you may be able to inflict may not be as damaging as you initially thought. The Ceratosaurus are best suited for group battles. It does have decent damage and speed, but that is not enough when you're alone. You might be fast, but you're not fast enough for them not to be able to keep up with you unless you're on a laggy server. There's only so much you can do alone. You do have the speed to run away and heal, but is that really honorable? But who am I to force human chivalry onto dinosaurs? Bottom line, if you're a solo Serrata, don't fight Apexes. As one would expect, fighting mid-tiers would be better because your stats are closer and it will be more of a race to who can get the most devastating bites and as many of them first. In this situation, it is good to use the terrain to your advantage. Not every mid-tier have the same agility as you, and hops for that matter. Using the combo I taught you with the charge bite and tail, you will slowly chip away the opponent's health. While you don't have to do it, you should try and avoid head-to-head -head clash, especially at the beginning. Chip away as much health as you can with the charge bite attack. Also, when you do fight mid-tiers, there is the possibility of them dodging your attack. They are no apexes, so they do have a bit more speed on their side. Of course, they don't have the health of one. So when you feel like your charge bite have done enough, then you can do a head-to-head -head clash. It's a bit of a gamble since you can only assume your opponent's health, but if the gamble pays right, you'll win the battle. If you're fighting low tiers, then this is a battle where the stats are in your favor, except in the speed category. It's really up to them if it's even going to be a battle. They can at any time just run away and outspeed you. Of course, if they do choose to fight, then I would choose to fight them in an area with a lot of hindrances to limit their movements. It will also be easier for you to somewhat hit them. However, if you play solo and there's a pack hunting you, then you better pray that you're faster than them. And if not, and they are just as fast as you and more agile than you, then there's nothing really much you can do. So to sum it all up, if you're going to fight Apexes, firstly, don't. 
but if you do insist, get as many charge up bite in as you can, and when you're low on stamina, run away, and heal if you need it, and then come back for more, and repeat this strategy for a longer period of time. I have yet to kill an Apex in this manner, but if you manage to do it, then tell me. For mid tiers, it's usually just attack, 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 also utilize the combo attack I taught you, and if you need it, use the terrain to your advantage. If and when you feel like your opponent's health has gone low enough, that's when you can try a more direct head-to-head -head attack, and hopefully you'll win that clash. As for low tiers, Hope that they'll actually battle you, and make sure you fight them in an area with a lot of hindrances to limit their movements, and when they're low, just, well, it's basically just bite when you can. And if you're attacked by a group, say sayonara, kiss your ass goodbye, and get ready to regrow your creature, unless the ones who are attacking you are slower than you, or can't take as much fall damage than you, and just use either the terrain to your advantage, or just straight up run away from them. If you have any creature you wish for me to cover and they are not in this batch, then just comment them down below, and I'll add them to the poll. Each batch, four creature will be chosen through poll. You can check community posts for any more info. And with that, I'ma go work on the Stego.